welcome back to the farm with the red door today I have a really fun recipe to share with you these are a they're a hand pie but they're a meat and vegetable hand pie they're like a, what you would picture like a turnover like an apple turnover but these are um, ground beef and vegetables and they're in a really light flaky crust and then you can dip them in ketchup or barbecue sauce we like ketchup um, but I love these because they they're very cheap to make the basic ingredients are ground beef just a pound of ground beef and potatoes carrots onions and then the crust the flaky crust is made with just flour and um, shortening and salt and water so it's super super cost effective it they don't cost much to make at all per per pie and I also like them because you can freeze them they freeze really well so I'll make a recipe of these we'll have them for dinner and then I'll pre-wrap each individual one and I'll store them in the freezer and um, they're great for lunches I can just take one out and pop it in Hans's lunch pail and it's it's a really filling lunch and especially in the winter time when it's cold and chilly and it just is a really hearty meal um, especially for him he's working construction so it's a really fun meal to have but um, a couple things I had mentioned that the crust calls for Crisco shortening I don't the original recipe called for that and I took shortening out of my kitchen took Crisco actually out of my kitchen and um, just because of the negative health impacts um, that that had and now I use it's called palm fruit shortening so it acts just like shortening but it's a much healthier alternative to that so I will link that in my blog and um, maybe you guys can pick some up yourself if you're wanting to make that switch now these hand pies this recipe I found it was a really old recipe and they were they were what the like the miners the people that would go mining in the caves they, they would make these and they would stick them in their pockets and they would take them down in to the caves and then they would heat them up at lunchtime over their little lanterns and they say they would put them on their shovel and put them over their lanterns and this is what they would eat so anyway it's a really old recipe and I love recipes like that especially when they're um, frugal and they're um, easy to make and delicious so I am just going to chop up the carrots potatoes onion and mix it up with the ground beef and then we'll move on to making the crust and I'll show you how to do that and how to actually form the little pies We're just going to add some salt, sea salt, and some ground pepper. And we're just going to mix this up by hand until it's super well mixed. And the, the recipe calls for a mixture of potatoes, carrots, onions, and rutabagas. I don't care for rutabagas or turnips or anything like that. And so I just substitute that with more carrots. I just like carrots better. So the printed recipe will give the exact amounts and you can get that, click, um, go to the link below and you can get the printable recipe for this. And then just adjust the vegetables to the ones that you like. If you like rutabagas, then go ahead and put them in there. Um, but if not, just add more potatoes or carrots. All right, so this is pretty well mixed. And now I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna get busy on the pastries next. Okay, so we're going to add the flour and the salt into a large bowl and give a little stir and then I'm going to mix in this shortening and I like to use a pastry blender and just um, do this to it until it incorporates it's like little uh, fine meal like coarse kind of like little pea size or smaller just to make sure it'd be more like a pea size shaped so just keep working with it until it's all incorporated in there we're 
bring you in close so you can see what the finished product looks like. So you're just going to keep doing this and breaking up that shortening. And when you run your hands through it, this is what it's going to look like. And so you can just run your hands. Um, when you think it's finished, just run your hands through all of this and see if you find any pieces that are big and just kind of break them up in your fingers again. And then you'll be ready to move on. Okay, now the recipe calls for a half of a cup of cold water. I don't like to add it all at once because it really depends on the weather, the atmosphere, the, just the moisture in the air, if you need that full amount or not. Uh, it's funny because I've, I've tested it and on more hum humid days or rainy days, I need less water than on dry days. So just kind of get a feel for it. Don't overwork it, just, you know, Mix it just a few times and until it gets, till it comes together in a nice pliable ball and then just stop adding water. This is supposed to be cold water so I did add an ice cube to it so it could be really cold water. The one thing with pastries is that you don't want, you don't want it to get warm because then all the fat is just going to start melting and it's going to be a mess to work with and then um, you also don't want to overwork it because it's just going to result in a tough dough. So I'm going to use my hands now so that I could see if, because it still looks dry to me and I did use the full amount of water, but sometimes when you use your hands, you realize that it does all come together in a nice ball and you can quit. Yeah, see this feels really nice. It was super clumpy not I mean really dry like a lot of dry but now that I'm starting to mix it with my hands it's just coming together in a nice beautiful ball of dough so just gather it all up and form form a round of dough and then I like to wrap it in saran wrap if I have a little bit of time before I'm actually going to use it I just pop it in the refrigerator and then finish gathering up all my stuff and getting ready and then I take it out and use it I don't like it just sitting out getting warm. All right, so you're gonna wanna lightly flour your countertops so the dough doesn't stick. And this recipe makes 14 hand pies, and so get a portion of dough, maybe divide it up into 14 different portions, and we're gonna roll each piece into a seven inch circle. So if you just start in the center and roll up to the 12 o'clock position, and then back to the center, and roll to the three o'clock, the six o'clock, nine o'clock, and back up to the 12 o'clock position. If you just keep going in that motion, you'll pretty much be able to get pretty close to a perfect circle. So if you have a ruler, just measure it, and once you get to a seven inch circle, we'll be ready to actually form the meat pies. Right, so you're going to want to get this. It folds in half and then it, it crimps the edges, smashes them together and seals it. So you're going to want to center this perfectly onto this. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can take this and you can put the meat filling and you can fold it over and you can use a fork and press it together. But um, I just like to use one of these and they don't cost very much money. And I put about five tablespoons is what I found is a good amount. You don't want to overfill it, so you won't be able to close it. All right, now you're going to want to just squeeze this together. And it'll actually cut the edges of this off and seal it really nice. Now if you get one like this, what you'll notice is it's squishing out 
this side. And so if you were to just open this really quick, it would actually cut that whole thing off. So you have to be really gentle and just kind of push it. until it's all the way through and now you can just very carefully peel it off. I'm going to bring this over and show you how perfect these are. You see that? Now the reason that I like to use one of these, it, did, it really doesn't cost that much and not use a fork is every time that I would fold this over and I would do it with a fork, press a fork down. The fork would always poke into my dough and make holes all along here. I just never got really good doing it with the fork and I, so that's why I really like this tool. So now you're done and you can just continue making these. Um, I'm gonna get a cookie sheet with a piece of parchment paper and I'm gonna line them up on that as I work with them until it's full and then we can pop them in the oven. So you're going to want to preheat your oven to 375 and then you're just going to place these in there and you're going to cook them for about 40 to 50 minutes. Um, if they're browning a little too quickly and you they still need to cook for a while, um, put a piece of parchment paper over the top to keep them from browning too much. But it should take about 45 to 50 minutes to cook these and then that's it you'll be ready to eat them. So I'm gonna go pop these in the oven and I'll be back and show you what they look like, the finished product. Well, they're finished and they smell delicious. I wish you guys could smell them. That's the bummer with YouTube videos is you can't smell them, you can only see them, but they smell delicious and they are just the perfect little hand pie. So you can serve these for dinner with a side of ketchup, um, mustard some people like to, or barbecue sauce. Or you can um, send them in a lunch. A lot of times I serve leftovers for lunch, but when I don't have any leftovers, I love to have a few of these stashed in the freezer that I can pull them out and send in Hans's lunch when I don't have anything else. So if you would like the recipe, go down below and um, click the link and you can get the printable recipe for these where you can get exact amounts and see my tutorial, um, my blog post there. So go ahead and subscribe and click the little bell so that you will be notified every time that I post. I post here weekly and I bring delicious recipes um, every week to this channel so you won't want to miss them. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next week.